Hello and welcome to the Tarka Zone. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about this smart travel electric e-bike that I purchased off Amazon. And I did promise my subscribers that I was going to do another review of this bike when I hit the 200 mile mark, which happened last night. Now I figured I might as well do this discussion while I have the page here up on Amazon instead of just videotaping the bike. In my future videos, I will be videotaping the bike so that you can see wear and tear if there's any issues in the future. I figured I'd do another video every 50 miles that I put on the thing. Now, I first want to say, and this is something I didn't point out uh, when I first did my initial video 20 days ago, was the fact that this bike is high off the ground. The seat is, and, the, and you can see that the seat is non-adjustable. So I believe what they recommend for this bike is if you're over five foot five to, to six foot four. Now I'm six foot one, and when I sit on this thing, my toes are touching, and my mo motorcycle is, you know, when I'm riding my motorcycle. Uh, my, both my feet can be planted firmly on the ground. So that tells you how high the seat is on this bike. So it's made for a taller person uh, or somebody with longer legs. Now I imagine if you're shorter than the five foot five recommendation that you could get the thing going and just jump on it. I mean, you know, and it's just that when you get to, when you dismount it, you're going to have to, you know, kind of like flop it to its side a little bit for your legs to hit the ground. Uh, it's just that it's a taller bike and the way the bike is designed, it's designed with no adjustable seating. Now, I haven't played around with the suspension, but I doubt you'll get anything out of the suspension. I mean, I imagine if you played around with it a little bit, you might gain an inch, but it's made, this bike is definitely made for taller people. Now, with all that said, the bike itself runs amazing. Now, this is what I call a throttle bike. I guess that's what I want to call it. It's not really designed to pedal all that much. It's got a throttle that you use, just like a motorcycle throttle, and you can decide how fast you go by what pedal assist that you put the bike in. Now, let me see if I can show you the... Uh, the uh, if they have well this that actually this video here shows the screen nicely and I wonder if I pop this out no I, I that's a shared thing so okay let's let's not try to pop it out so when you look at this video and you'll see the the screen or the uh, the bike's main computer um, screen on the bottom side of it, so if the screen is that we're looking is like this, on the bottom side of it, there's a plus and minus to the, for the pedal assist. It's just a push of a button. Now, on the top port of it, there's an on and off switch that you just hold down for like five seconds. It turns the bike on. So that's really it when it comes to the, it's not touch screen. It's just these three buttons, uh, the one on the top to turn it on and the one at the, the two at the bottom to bring it up pedal assist up or down now honestly i don't know why you would want to go anything lighter than pedal assist five i mean i put my bike as soon as i turn it on i put it in pedal assist five i pull the throttle and i'm on my way now with that said at pedal assist five you can manage the speed by how much throttle you give it i mean when i try putting it in anything else if the bike just goes too slow for me I mean, I'm 195, uh, 97 pounds. So I'm 197 pounds. Most of my terrain here on the island is flat, but I do have the occasional hill. And this thing rides up hills just fine. It goes slower um, when it, you know, if it's a steep hill and you're coming around that top of the crest, it will slow the bike down. Uh, usually, I get it slows it down about 10 miles an hour. So if I'm humming at 34 miles an hour and I hit a really, ex you know, gradual hill. Uh, it'll go all the way down to almost 22, 24 miles an hour. Uh, it doesn't have multiple gears. It's got basically, you know, when you throttle, it just goes. And depending on how much throttle you give it, it gives you, depending on how much uh, uh, miles per hour you get, depending on how much throttle you get. Now, the thing goes 34 miles an hour. I know the, uh, the description here on Amazon says 32 miles per hour, and maybe that's just for safe saying that that's what you're going to get, or maybe if I had another 50 pounds on me, that's what I was going to get. But with me on, on the bike, 
I get constantly 34 miles an hour. And the way the battery works with this thing, it's not like a degrade. It's a, a degrade on the miles per hour. Basically, you're going to get the full bow until the battery's dead. Now, for what I'm using the bike for, and I talked to the company uh, because I was kind of nervous about uh, its, uh, its overall length miles that I could get with the bike because here it says you could get up to 80 miles on a single charge and I contacted the the, the distributor and they said yes uh, that's true if you remain in pedal assist one and you're pedaling and not using the throttle at all so if you're going to pedal and just be in pedal assist once one which I think is top speed was like eight miles an hour uh, you'll get 80 miles out of the bike. But the thing about it is this bike has no gears. So to pedal that much for, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, if it had gears that you could fly through, uh, then yeah, pedaling all the time. Um, this is a throttle bike. This is a cruising bike. So basically you're just going to want, I mean, I do pedal to get exercise occasionally, uh, but the bike is not designed really to do that. I think they slapped the pedals on this thing just to keep it in the e-bike category because overall, it just feels like a motorcycle. A motorcycle that top speed is 34 miles an hour, which is electric. So with all that said, I get about 25 to 30 miles out of the battery uh, if I put it on pedal assist five, top notch pedal assist five, crank that baby up to 34 miles an hour. I'll get about 30 miles out of it. It depends on, you know, you know wind conditions. It's going to, how many hills I hit, but I usually roll back into my house when I still got a sliver of battery left. So I got one bar of battery left and I put about 30 miles onto the bike. Now I also talked to the distributor about that saying, well, geez, this thing seems to degrade quickly uh, when it comes to the battery consumption. It goes quick. Uh, and I think, and I've read on other reviews that their display, I don't think is that accurate when it comes to recognizing what actually is left in the battery, because I'll get the battery thing to go down to one square after being on the bike, maybe 10, 15 minutes. But then I stop, I power the bike off, I power it back on and I got full bars again. And I'll go with full bars again for another 10 minutes and then you'll start seeing it go down again. So I don't think it's registering it right. So what I did was I kind of pushed it to the maximum until I you know, made the battery go dead. And then where I had to pedal my way home and that was around 32 miles. So that was basically 30 miles. And then the battery basically said, you know, I got nothing left in me. Uh, and then you can pedal home, which is not that bad on flat surfaces. But if you hit a hill and you're just pedaling, this bike is going to make you work for it. And standing, you know how people will stand on the bike upright and pedal hard. That doesn't feel comfortable on this bike. I, you basically got to be sitting on it at the whole time, even going up hills. Uh, but for all, after all saying that, I mean, the bike is still performs great i mean it's got the wide knobby tires and i've gone off road with this thing i got a local park down the road and it's got some hiking trails and i've actually taken this thing on those trails bumps and i mean and there's this uh road on the back end of the island that has all these potholes in it so i'm race i'm going 34 miles an hour i'm talking potholes and, and if you hit one of these things it, 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 woo, you're going to go flying. And what I'm doing is using them as like a, an obstacle course. And this thing does it turns on a dime. It, you know, so I'm in a weaving through all these potholes while I'm doing 34 miles an hour. It's fun. It's fun. I mean, a little dangerous, but it's fun. Now I wear a bicycle helmet that I got off Amazon, which I really uh, like uh, that came. I, I mean, I can do a review on that helmet later on, but it's got a nice little light in the back that flashes if you want to turn it on. But I do ride a, with, a, with a bicycle helmet. Now, what else can I say about this thing? Uh, let's just look at these pictures. Oh, geez. Uh, you know, they say it's a 120-watt uh, brushless motor with a 35% incline. They're saying that you can do that. Uh, I would say yes. It's just that you're going to slow down as you're going up that hill. You're not going to hit that hill at a full 34 miles an hour. It's just not going to happen. And then you, it says though the max speed is 32 miles an hour. Now, I think maybe they are they're also putting the 32 miles per hour on this thing is because that's where you get from class 3 e-bike to like not being a class 3 e-bike. 
And if you're outside the scope of class three, some states would require you to register the thing. So maybe that's why they've made it this way. I know in my state, this thing still falls under a class three e-bike. There's a class one, class two, class three e-bikes. This is a class three. And uh, in Vermont, the, uh, the registration is not required. Insurance is not required. Granted, it's getting up to 34 miles an hour. And, I, and a good portion of the conditions that I ride on is Route 2, which is 50, 55 miles an hour. So I'm in the bike lane doing 34 miles an hour as people are whipping by me doing 55. And I feel comfortable with the thing, especially with huge tractor trailers coming up on my side. You know how they push the wind. They, you know, Obviously, they displace more uh, air. And when they go by, you can feel them. But on this bike, it's you can barely notice it. I, it, it. Same thing with my motorcycle. You know, when I'm whipping my motorcycle, when I get my motorcycle up to 70 miles an hour and tractor trailers are whizzing by me like I'm standing still, you know, you get a little bit of flutter. But with this e-bike, I don't get any flutter at all. I mean, but then again, the top speed is 55 miles an hour. I mean, I guess maybe if they were flying by me doing 70, I would, I would feel it. Now, the... The brakes work amazing. I have had to adjust them. People on other reviews said you got to kind of mechanically adjust them uh, to, to shore them up. And no, that's right out of the box. Now, when I say right out of the box, too, to keep in mind that the the bike needs to be put together. It comes together ninety percent is put together. The thing about it is you got to put the wheel, the front wheel on. You got to do a couple minor things. It's not that complicated because it shows up in a huge box. And I showed up. I pulled it out of the box. I think the thing weighs like 80 pounds, maybe. I Maybe I, I'm saying it weighs too much. I, I think it's 80 pounds. It was not that hard to... Uh, uh, I'll hear some good information. It wasn't that hard to get it out of the box, put the front wheel on it, put the headlight, because the headlight, you have to put that on it. And for the headlight, the headlight is bright as heck. The It's pretty bright, especially when I'm driving at night. I mean, it's bright. Now, as a motorcycle rider, I keep the headlight on all the time. I never shut it off. So that might be also draining the battery more than I'd like. But as for... For the sake of safety, I keep those things on. So, and there's a switch right on the handlebar that allows you to turn those lights on or off. I leave them on. I just do. So, here it's saying you get 35 to 80 miles of riding range. Again, the distributor of this bike told me that that mileage range was based on Pedal Assist 1. So, just keep that in mind. Four to eight hour full charge. Usually, I can get a full charge in four hours with no problem. And I'm I'm back onto the uh, back onto the bike. Uh, let me just scroll down here, uh, see what else they they want to say about this bike. Uh, that I want anything I want to point out before we button up this video. It's got turn signals. Now, what I mentioned in a video before was the fact that. The turn signals do not have an auto shut off. Like my motorcycle, if I turn the turn signal on, once I make the turn, I think there's a, a gimbal that tells the thing to shut off after I've made the turn. This bike does not have that technology. So if you turn the directional on, just keep in mind that you got to shut it manually off or the thing's going to continuously go. Uh, with me at night, I can see it blinking because uh, I can see it bouncing off the terrain. Uh, but during the day, if you're using it, there's no indication. The, the, the computer screen doesn't indicate it. There's nothing on your dashboard that indicates that it's on. You just, if you've turned it on, you just got to remember you've turned it on, and you've got to remember to turn it off. You got to manually do it. It's right above the horn uh, on the on the handlebars. Uh, let's see here. What else do they got for pictures that we can? Uh, and the back, the back light is full brake light. So when you apply the brakes, the light comes on. Your directional is also part of this light fixture. Uh, dual shock absorbers work great, especially when I do hit those potholes. Goes through water slick and sand. I had no problem with sand or water conditions with it. Uh, the full display. This is the size of the bike. So if you want to get a better understanding of, of its size, there you go. There's a nice uh, picture right there about it. And back to the turn signals. 
Okay, so th let's just continue going down through here. I don't think, well, I think what we're going to do is run into reviews. All right, so let's just go to this picture here just so that uh, you can see this is how it comes put, put together in the box. So what you want to do is you take the tire off and you put it on the front. And then you put, I mean, it really, there wasn't really much to, to do. And that's exactly the, in the directions. Once you put the front handlebars on, you flip the bike upside down and then you just put the wheel on. It, it really is not that complicated. And that's it put together right there. And that's it uh, without the wheel on it. That's the box that it comes in. And the guy's got it in the house. You can see he's got the, He's got the, the light on, on the front of it. Uh, so, you know, when I read the reviews here on the three stars and four stars, uh, people were complaining about its size, that it's too big. It's, you know, it's, it's too big for their short uh, stature. And uh, one person's like, I am, I am five foot four and I can't get on the thing without a stool. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I think somewhere in the documentation is it says five foot five minimum. So you just got to keep that in mind. But overall, it's a great product. And my next video will be, you know, showing the bike some more. I figured this video would be easier to, to just show you. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why don't I put my reviews actually on, on Amazon? Well, I stopped doing that about a year ago because 99% of every video I try to post to Amazon, they 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 reject it as me not uh, meeting their their. I guess because I'm affiliated with Tarka Zone Productions, they're they're looking at it as me being a commercial, and I'm I'm not meeting their standards, so they don't allow me to post on Amazon my videos. So you'll find my videos only on my YouTube channel talking about the bike. And I've told vendors in the past that I'd love to review your product actually on Amazon, but Amazon just will just send me a notification saying that you, your video does not meet our, our standards and and that's that so that's why you don't see my reviews anymore on amazon platform but i do have them on my youtube so the bike today you can get it for 1500 bucks well worth it i know you could probably go get a gas powered motorcycle uh a really cheap end one for around 3500 bucks so think about it that way is you could go double the value you could spend double the money and go get a a, a 350 motorcycle but that's going to be gas powered so what's the convenient with this thing is it's electric it's fully electric so it fits within the you know eco standards if you kind of like believe in that thing i mean i know power is generated by multiple avenues of from propane to diesel to whatever in the power plants eventually what's going to happen is i think our infrastructure our energy infrastructure is going to be moving more to renewables and at this point it just makes sense to to not rely on uh, oil to move your your stuff around right i mean i think eventually at least in america here i think in the next 15 years mostly everything's going to be electric and we're going to try to make oil in the salt if you know what that means you know salt used to be the uh the highest value commodity in the world it was it actually was used as trade and, you know it had a higher value than gold uh, because it was used to preserve food but once we as a civilization figured out a better way to preserve food, the salt value went through the floor. It's worth nothing now, right? So eventually, when you take away the fact that you need oil, then you turn the oil value into salt value because it becomes nothing because hopefully we as a society move forward with renewable energies, get out of the oil industry. And then what's also nice about it is no matter where you plug the thing in, it's always available. Whereas when it comes to oil, you're, you, you got to be at a gas station or you got, you're at the, uh, you're at the, the mercy of whatever the oil values are where electricity values in the United States kind of, you know, you know, kind of stay the same. I pay the same electricity I did 10 years ago where I live. I mean, so I, I really think electric is the way to go. And that's the other reason why I bought this bike. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. And this has been the Tarkas Zone.